Chevrolet. This is casting number 241. And this is going to be a stage 3 operation here, which is unshrouding the combustion chamber, enlarging the valve size from 2065 to 2250, and 188 on the combustion chamber on the exhaust. Now, we don't go into a full chamber polish here. Basically, the scribe line is going to dictate the area I cut and move around in order to unshroud the intake valve. The exhaust we're not that worried about. And this is the first step. Now, in this step here, as you can see, where I scribe the line to the Felpro gasket that uses a 4350 bore diameter gasket. See, there's quite a bit of meat I got to chunk out. If I don't go in here and relieve this and get this out of the way, there would be no use of even putting that valve in the head. People like to put big valves in heads and do all this stuff when, um, if it's uh, it ain't unshrouded, there's just no sense in doing it. It would actually cut air off and not let it in on this side of the chamber. So that's our first step to unshroud the chamber. And then we're going to do the guides and the valve job and set for everything to be done on the bowls and come out from the bowls this way. Alright, the first tool I'm going to use is I'm going to use this big cylinder that's got a rounded nose on the end and it's going to chop this away. And then we'll go to a smaller cylinder and then pull it in. So let me show you how I go ahead and set this up. Okay, and this is how I do it. I'm going to go in here first and dig. I'm, I'm going to try to dig at this angle and then pull back. So I go in and back. Okay, I just wanted to show you that little bit. Now I'm going to go in there. And I go down and in. I'm going to start pulling that back and then we'll check back in. Okay, using the big cutter, as you can see what I've done, I went in here and started digging out what would on this side be uh, around the intake valve. I got to clear this out because as the valve comes out, we don't want no shrouding. When you're doing so many chambers, you have to have a method or a way of doing this to where you get them all lined up. That's how I do it. Simple enough, I find me a reference point, lay my ruler on there, take a sharpie, and you can see my lines I've already got marked, and it just so happened that the area I needed to mark is almost half the distance of the bolt hole moon. So right here, when I line them up, boom, I got almost half a hole, they're pretty level, and I'll take a marking and go boom, boom, boom. This makes me a point or a mark once I get that that I grind to. I'll still touch up and layer it after that. But the heavy metal material removal that I'm doing with the, uh, the big cylinder comes to that point. Let me see if I can get you in there to show you. You can see the dip or the crevice when I was in there with the cylinder grinding, taking some of this uh, uh, flame quench type pad away. While it isn't quench, it has a lot to do with burn, but it's just shrouding that area there too much. So I go in here, be careful, don't go crazy because I have seen people bust through these chambers with this sharp of an egg, it's real easy to do. Now when you make the comparison, and you go over here to this side, okay, now we're ready, I'll show you how I dig, I go and work on the hump, not deep that way, but see I've already left a little bit of a trench, when I had the head turned around, so I'm just going to try to pull it left. Now that arrow's telling me, point I want to start pulling it in.
Now you see how I've tore material out to that line. Now what I'm going to do is start pulling it in right here and try to bring it in, laying back at a little lower angle around 15 degrees less. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see why I'm doing it this way. I've took that big hump, the chunk out. straight on, excuse me, this, my foot has an awful problem keeping that, I'm so sorry. Okay, okay, now you're starting to see, look where the black line is right there. I see I'm starting to curve. I'll go back in here and touch that. A lot of this is feel. You take your finger, go from the edge, and there's a swoop. Now I can tell I gotta touch some more there. But you'll do your touch up after you get the bulk of material removed and uh, like I said, I've already did the unshrouding with the big one, so I'll use this big burr to cut all that out. Then I'll switch to the smaller one, and over here I'll come back and finish this with an egg because that egg is rounded, and it's going to put a roundness to that chamber as it starts to come up around that plug. All right. You just can't imagine the amount of horsepower it makes doing this to one of these big block heads. Slamming a 2-250, I like to go to 2-300 actually on these. I mean, it just turns them into a street machine from hell. Okay.